Yeah, hi guys, I just have some information to share with you and a story that I found here on the BBC News website from Thursday the 30th of August 2001 and the story is called Rainmaking Link to Killer Floods and you can see there's a gentleman here with a plane. I'll just read the story to you. 35 deaths in the infamous Lynmouth flood disaster came only days after RAF rainmaking experiments over the southern England it has emerged. 90 million tonnes of water swept down the narrow valley in Lynmouth on the 15th of August 1952, destroying whole buildings. Now a BBC investigation has confirmed that secret experiments were causing heavy rainfall. Classified documents on the trials have gone missing but people involved have told their story for the BBC Radio Force document programme. North Devon experienced 250 times the normal August rainfall in 1952. Survivors tell how the air smelled of sulphur on the afternoon of the floods and the rain fell so hard it hurt people's faces. The east and west Lynn rivers which dropped rapidly down from Exmoor were swollen even before the fatal storm. Trees were uprooted and formed dams behind bridges, creating walls of water that carried huge boulders into the village, destroying shops, hotels and homes. Bodies washed out to sea were never found. Dilly Shingleton lost six members of her family, including her grandmother. She recalls, Mum identified her by his this huge wart on her back because she hadn't got no head or arms or legs when they found her. Survivors called for an investigation into the causes and rumours of planes circling prior to the deluge. The Ministry of Defence have denied knowledge of the so-called cloud seeding experiments during early August 1952. Tony Speller asked to see Ministry of Defence files when he was an MP for North Devon under Margaret Thatcher. He said, I could never find anything of any consequence except the fact that papers were clearly missing for this significant years. But the document team have tracked down fresh evidence, including RAF logbooks and personal testimony. Operation Cumulus was jokingly referred to by those involved as Operation Witch Doctor. The team found a broadcast from the time that refers to the experiments and the disaster. Alan Yates, a glider pilot, tells how he flew over Bedfordshire as part of Operation Cumulus, spraying quantities of salt into the air. Scientists told him it caused a heavy downpour in Staines, 50 miles away in Middlesex. He said, I was told that the rain had been the heaviest for several years, and all out of a sky which looked summery. The seedsman had said he'd make it rain, and he did. Toasts were drunk to meteorology. It was not until the BBC News Bulletin was read later on that a stony silence fell on the company. The team is still hoping for evidence that would clinch their case beyond all reasonable doubt. Other flights may have taken place, possibly using silver iodine. Now I'm going to give you the link and you can see this for yourself but obviously you know this is telling you that weather modification has been going on since 1952 and they've been able to to seed clouds and to make it rain um this this story is really upsetting to me because obviously a lot of people lost their lives and um you can see here buildings and like you know the whole section of land here has just disappeared it rains so much and you know people said they saw planes going over for several hours before overhead and they were play, you know flying over and spraying stuff which the pilot has confirmed in this story I just want to compare this happened obviously in 1952 I just want to compare and show you what's happening today in 2012 so I've got another story here from the news um, this is from the 26th of September 2012 and obviously we're all aware of all the spraying and the geoengineering that's taking place at the moment over the UK and also globally. Some places aren't having it, but we are. And rain is either being 
brought to us in a mass quantity or we're not getting it at all. I just want to show you this quick story and I do hope you can see it once I press play. Um, UK floods, homes at risk as misery continues. Now this is what's happening at the moment today and we are aware that these um, that weather modification is taking place and the geoengineers that are doing this um, they actually say themselves there's an unknown risk to the environment and there's an unknown risk to people just want to show you this this is what's happening today 26th of September this is what's happening this year this is what weather modification is the cause of what you were just about to see A block of flats, we're understanding, had to be evacuated after, and we'll close in on this, see if you can have a, a, a better look. The foundations uh, of the flat seems to have been, seem to have been washed away um, by the floods. As you see, the camera's moving into the bottom there. The foundations um, of this building have been washed away. That's why they put the bags up along the side to try and stem the damage. This is Newburn in Newcastle. Yeah, it's just on the outskirts of Newcastle. Um, about 40 residents have been evacuated from uh, those buildings we gather yesterday. Um, I think the pictures show a, a rover car completely uh, buried and uh, an underground, you can see gosh, there, gosh, what that. a lot of uh, devastation those floods have caused. Um, we've seen flooding right across the north of uh, the UK, but nothing really quite as dramatic perhaps as that and uh, really suddenly that has become rather like a waterfall hasn't yeah, it? Yeah they're calling it an underground stream, doesn't look that underground actually at the moment, running right across the middle of the main road and they've got uh, diggers coming in there to clear away the mud um, but uh, that block of flats they now say which has been evacuated uh, said to be close to collapse. Yeah you would think that uh, there'll be quite a lot of structural work to involve to try and save um, those flats actually because clearly the foundations have completely been swept away really um, and it's very very precarious indeed there um, so just the results of the devastating flooding that we've seen in the last uh, yeah, you can couple see of from days these pictures, it looks absolutely isolated up there doesn't it? it looks like it's sort of on stilts because the ground beneath it has just caved away uh, devastating for uh, all those residents. So the last time the UK saw floods like this and rain like this, it was because there was a rain-making experiment going on and the RAF were doing it. So we're aware that this is going on today. This is the results of what's happening today, what you've seen, and once again, it's up north in the UK. You know, it's not even, you know, it's ridiculous. So for those people that say... Um, that all of this is a load of rubbish and these things aren't happening, when you look into the past, you'll be able to see what's happening in the future a lot easier and you'll be able to understand what's happening today. If you just look into the past, you know, you don't have to go totally into the past, but if you look into the past, it breaks down today and it makes it easier to understand. Now, I just want to show you something else that I found. This is a book online. Um, let me just get the title of it. It's called Geo, Geo Piracy. Okay, I'm going to just go back to page 15. It's really interesting. I will leave the link. You need to um, go and have a look at this. Just this page here. It's called Media Blitz. Increase in publications while policy makers test the waters. So at the moment, in the year 2012, they're not testing the waters. They are continuing these experiments and they are practicing geoengineering which is messing up our rain it's messing up the eco it's messing up people's health and they are aware themselves that there's unknown risks so i'm just going to quickly read this to you it says to date current support for geoengineering has come from scientific and political circles as well as mainstream media so mainstream media is supporting what is happening that is why you see so much subliminal chemtrails everywhere. It's all over country file on the BBC. I don't watch TV anymore, okay? I haven't watched TV for like two years. But I'm told these things and people tell me about them. Um, 
it's all over magazines, it's in cartoons, you know, you, c you can find these things out and see for yourself. But mainstream media are supporting what's happening. Once a few prominent climate scientists have endorsed geoengineering as a scientifically credible endeavour, in print publishing in the field exploded both in scholarly journals and in the popular press. So not only did it go, you know, I'm going to show you a couple of diagrams they have here as well. So scientific articles on geoengineering before and after 2002. So from 1994 to 2001, there was about 100 articles. That's how many they'd put out into the public because, you know, they weren't experimenting and doing it so hard as they were then. So they started between the year 2002 to 2009. This is the newspapers. 700 articles and they were just slipping it in just putting little articles in about geoengineering they said they were testing the waters but they were also carrying out the geoengineering at the same time as trying to make people think it was normal and question about it but in reality they were actually doing it so media coverage of geoengineering before and after 2002 so 1994 2001 magazines and newspapers 2002 to 2009, you had newspapers, blogs and magazines mentioning geoengineering just to get it out into the public domain whilst they were still doing it. They, they're testing the waters whilst they're spraying us like bugs, whilst they're messing with our weather, whilst they're deciding who gets the rain and who doesn't get the rain, whilst they're deciding who will get sunshine today and who won't get sunshine today right they've been doing this for years like i said to you this experiment is from 1952 guys so can you imagine the day they did this experiment the raf did this experiment can you imagine what their technology is like now it's frightening and still people don't believe it's happening so i'll leave all the links below you can check this out this is a really good article there's some really good quotes on it as well um, there's one here from James Fleming. Today's aspiring climate engineers wildly exaggerate what is possible and scarcely consider the political or ethical implications of attempting to manage the world's climate. I'll just leave the last word with James Fleming. Peace out, people. <laughs>